Don't you know that you're a grown up? No gates, no punts. Not a lot if you're a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listeners. Welcome to this backtrack episode of our show. As you know, this is the show between our regular episodes where we pick a single topic from our lives growing up as a Generation Xer and dig in deep. Joining me as always, I have Mo. Hey, everybody. And George is here. Yes, sir. How you doing? I am doing well. I'm looking forward to talking about and reminiscing about something our fourth listener <sighs> suggested. Yeah. Cool. I have a uh, portion of an email here from our fourth listener, Tom C. Uh, and he writes, I think you guys have referenced this once before, but I too remember standing for what seemed like hours with my finger on the play and record button of the portable cassette deck so I could record my new favorite song off the radio. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) Then when it finally came on, you had to be totally silent and inevitably that's when my little sister interrupted one of her ramblings about nonsensical girl stuff. Damn it, get out! Maybe if I call the radio station and make a request, mom, where's the phone book? Right. Oh yeah. (laughs) That brings back a lot of interesting memories. Yep. Oh, man. So, Tom, you inspired us for this episode of the Backtrack Podcast. And in this episode, we're going to discuss not just recording your favorite, but the whole experience surrounding local radio and how it was different. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Charlie Tuna. Here at K-Hits 97, we spend a lot of time carefully choosing the songs we play. That's why you hear only the music you like best. Tom C., we are going to kick it off now to talk about your suggestion, which is the experience of local radio stations. And before we get started, we want to clarify what we're talking about, right? So in the 80s, (laughs) right? Yeah. no internet, (laughs) no internet, no satellite radio, no satellite, no MP3s on your iPod, no podcasts. Oh my (gasps) God. Oh my God. No podcasts. (laughs) <laughs> so if you wanted to listen to music, you had a couple of choices. You either had to have it on a cassette or an eight track in your car. Right. Or mm-hmm. in your house. Record, yeah, LP. You had to literally put a thing with just five or six songs. Or the more common thing is you listen to the radio. Yes. yes. The radio was a local presence in your community. Absolutely. It was great because you knew the channel number that you had to tune your radio dial to. Their call letters yeah. generally made yeah. up their name like uh, WGLF <laughs> here in Tallahassee. Hesse was Gulf 104. You had presets, but you actually knew. Oh, yeah. I don't even know people's phone numbers. I couldn't tell you the phone numbers of any of my best friends because I just auto dial. But I knew I listened to 106.3 and 107.2 and 89. I mean, you knew everything. (laughs) When I was a kid, the radio didn't even have it wasn't a digital. It was analog. So your presets were those physical (laughs) buttons that you had to jam. I didn't know how to set those things. (laughs) So you'd tune into that station Mm -hmm. and you'd tweak it just a little turning the dial just yeah. This way or that. I had one of my old radio tuners had two knobs. It had the, the coarse tuning. And, and they had another knob that oh, had a different right. pulley that would turn it really, really, that. really just yeah, yeah. gradually. That's one thing I kind of miss about having that local aspect to it is that everything about it was for your area. Yes. Yeah, it was just you. It was just yeah. you. Like, if it happened to be raining outside, they'd be talking about the fact that it's raining. Yeah. They just looked out the freaking window. Like, yeah. that's raining outside. <laughs> right. That's your town. And it was your local DJ. It was a person that you could see them in the grocery store. Oh, you yeah. wouldn't know what they looked like, because that was the other thing. Their voices always fooled you. They were some of the most oh, grotesque-looking look people most of the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. They are. Like oh. us, you know. Oh. What they say? They have a face oh. made for radio? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but they sounded like gods. I, exactly. exactly. Those people were like local celebrities. Yes, they were. They would sit on the back hump of a convertible in the parade, and they would be at mall openings mm-hmm. when the Sears opened down at the mall, back right. when they had Sears. Yeah. <laughs> Montgomery <laughs> Wards. <laughs> they, they were like these B-level celebrities that were local. They were kind of approachable, but they gave just a little touch of class because they brought down the local DJ, you know? Oh, and they would do the live DJ things too locally, right? If you had an event at a local gas station or barbecue oh, place yeah, or something right. they would come yeah. down and they would host the radio station from that event and would give away That's prize right. stuff that I was awesome. about those yeah we're live from joe smith dodge chrysler that's right <laughs> where you could get a hell of a deal on a fiat or whatever the hell they're selling down there you'd be in your car with your parents or something and you would get them to tune it to your station and live from the mcdonald's on fifth avenue oh that's right and you'd right, be like yep. mom let's go we gotta go right now they're giving away frisbees we're in the big red tent with the inflatable gorilla come down get a hot dog and a coke and test drive a dodge that's right <laughs> <laughs> and they always had a lot of swag to give away and now that it's all kind of national with satellite radio they can get lots of interviews with people because everyone listens 
but it's not local at all. And right. who the hell knows who those people are? You never see or talk to. And they're not talking about your town. Yeah. For us, sometimes like serious 80s on 8 or something like that, they're talking about stuff we remember growing up, but it doesn't have the same feel of this guy is literally down the street. I could drive there right now yeah. and go talk yeah. to him. Because that also kind of takes you to like the fact that you could communicate with these people, right? You could actually call into a radio station. You could talk to that DJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it wasn't 8 million people trying to call a national show necessarily. It was just the guy in the booth up the street. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you would call and talk to them, right? You would call in, oh, hey, can you play this song that I heard you play the other day? That was the amazing part. Just that interaction with them when they were talking with you on the phone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For you, you were like, I'm talking to... I'm talking to that guy. It felt that way to you, but to them, they would just hold a conversation with you sometimes in between songs. Yeah, mm-hmm. you forget they're just people. Yeah. In hindsight, I know when I called and asked for my favorite song, in reality, 20 other people probably ask for that song and they have a playlist they have to play. Mm-hmm. But if you ask for it and the guy said he'd play it for you, then you knew he did. Yeah. yeah. Or you thought you did. It felt personal. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You felt listened to. You felt like you were a part of that community, that media, whatever you want to call it. You almost felt a little bit like a celebrity yourself because sometimes they might even mention... Give your name. They might give you a yeah. shout out. Yeah. Or just like, hey, for that kid who just called in, yep. I'm going to play Dire Straits right now or whatever you would call there it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, they would. Yeah, and you'd be like, cool. he's talking about me. Yeah. You know, be like when the musician would point to somebody from the stage, you know, you're like, he's pointing at me. That's right. Oh, yeah. This song's for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember like calling in requests for other people. This is for Sally. On the, you know, oh, promo. yeah. When you were trying to get that girl or guy, right? <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, the cool version of that was sometimes they would record you saying, all right, we'll use your voice on the radio. Say whatever. Hey, uh, 102, the power pig rocks the right. coast and from one to four. And they would play you back and like, yeah. I'm a superstar for three seconds. Yep. Because you knew like thousands of people were listening to it. I had this experience when I was in college. I was an architecture major and you're always working like really late in the studio and it was like two o'clock in the morning and we called the DJ and all 20 of us recommended a song and he played every single one. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's some power. Because nobody else was awake at that time. <laughs> <laughs> These are for the architecture students at Carnegie Mellon that are still awake and working on their projects and he played like all of these songs. It was damn cool. The worst though was when they would record you dedicating a song to that special someone you were trying to impress and you'd be all nervous and flub your words and they wouldn't oh. edit it like we do. George, did you dedicate a song to your mom? Yes, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, if you're listening to this, you're the only one that I ever dedicated a song to. (laughs) You're totally right, George. You you know, you're like, this is going to make the difference. She's going to hear that John from Podunk Lofman down by the mud hole wanted to play Heaven in Your Eyes. And that's going to make all the difference. (laughs) And that he's sorry for what he said earlier. Oh, right. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. All is forgiven because I heard it on the radio. Let's head to the dedication line and find out who this is. Hi, this is Erin. Erin, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Reseda. When's the big date? Oh, it's in September, September 15th. Well, best of luck to you. I also tell you what, I'm going to throw in one of Southern California's favorite albums for you. Oh, and, great. And the dedication and the album are from your favorite radio station. Cares 101. Did you ever have it like where you would set up with your friends like, okay... I'm going to listen from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. tonight, and let's try and get all these songs played. You would try and, like, do these little hidden agenda radio broadcasting like guerrilla warfare kind of things. <laughs> wow, you were way more organized. We would. Yeah, we would try and do all kinds <laughs> yeah, of stuff. Kidding. <laughs> we're going to set the agenda. Think about like when contests were coming up, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, they would be giving away concert tickets or free food coupons to the local restaurant or something. You had to be a certain caller. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it was connected to like, the, if they're 107, then they're like, be the seventh right. caller at 777777 or whatever crazy number they had. You had to be the nth caller to win. Oh. Super challenge sometimes depending on the phone you had did you guys have that friend that was really good at doing that <laughs> being the 10th caller I had a guy who was like a master at that we would have like banks of people because you only have one phone in your house at that point right <laughs> you know you didn't have like multiple phones so we would have like a group of like 10 friends and we would all call in to try and block everyone else out and one of us would win dogpiling the yes, contest yes we were <laughs> 
Because those damn rotary <laughs> phones were hard to deal with, man. Yeah. You had to dial the first six and numbers. And then you had to wait. Yep. Thanks. You're the third caller. Right. Damn it. I got to start over. And by then, it was too late. Because if you were the third caller and it had to be the 12th, forget it. You're not getting You'll that rotary get phone in. around in time. That's right. I grew up in New York. They didn't do like third caller. They would do like the 80th caller. This is New York City. Right. You know, a lot of people listening. And so trying to time that was like almost impossible. I don't know why I remember this, but there was a radio station called 99X. Okay. And they played mostly pop stuff. They had this contest where the guy would, they would give off these clues to a location in the city Mm -hmm. and if you went to that location at a certain time and found their person there you would win like a thousand dollars wow no i can't say they did (laughs) that but that's cool now here's the thing though you had to walk up to people and ask them Hey, are you the are you, next you guy? that person? So you had to go down there and <laughs> pester a bunch of people. And let me tell you, some of the clues that they were tough. You could just walk up and clock people and start searching their purses and stuff, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could. But one time my brother figured it out. Him and my other brother went there and they brought our dog. And he said people were asking like, is that the 99X dog? Is that the 99X? <laughs> you were like faking them out and stuff on purpose. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, here locally was a smaller market. So what they would do, what I noticed with contests, if it was a contest for a coupon to the gas, station or food place or whatever it would be the the tenth caller or the ninth caller but when they would have those bigger contests for the bigger larger prizes or cash money or whatever then it would become the 99th caller did you ever get the one where they would try to call you and if you answered your phone with a certain catchphrase you won yeah oh yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. that was really big here too now the smart contest i always thought they did later was to get people to listen more frequently is rather than saying call in now they would say here is the song of the day you gotta listen all day when you hear the song that's when you dial it when you hear this song call it yep song of the day yeah they were sneaky yeah that'd have you listening for hours on end you'd be like damn it i went to a bathroom (laughs) crap (laughs) And here's your $3 prize. Exactly. (laughs) I mean, it could be the cheapest prize, but they never had a problem with people calling in. Well, no, because it was the experience that you were having fun with. It wasn't necessarily the prize. That's the whole point of this backtrack. Yeah, Yeah, it was more than just winning that burger. It was the fact that you were on the radio. That's right. Other people were hearing what you were doing. Speaking about like waiting for that song to come on, that contest, you guys remember trying to record your favorite song? Oh, (laughs) Man, that's all part of the listening experience. We talked about, you know, you knew the people and you you could talk to them. Listening to the radio was a whole different world. It was a different experience. I mean, it was a totally different experience. This is exactly what Tom C., who wrote in, was talking about. That experience of, I don't know if I get a chance to buy this at the store. I don't have the money. I'm going to record it off the radio. And you're sitting there waiting to push play record, right? Oh, yeah. I have a pet peeve. George, you? Really? Uh, Yeah, me? Who? I'm the (laughs) nice guy. Add it to the list. (laughs) So cassettes at that point, they were like, 10 bucks if they were in the bargain bin. They were 20 bucks, you know, when they were first coming out and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they would have 12, maybe 13 songs on them, I think, something along those lines. That'd be a lot, actually. That was a lot of your allowance, or if you had a small little part-time job once you got to high school age or something, that was not a a small buy for you. That was large. That's several hours of work. That would be like today if you went to go buy the super edition of some video game or something that's like 120 bucks that comes with a prop or whatever. Yeah, It was an investment. Yeah. You would get the perfect song. It would be crystal clear audio for the cassette at the time and all. But I didn't have that. I needed to record off the radio because I didn't have that kind of money. Me too. The thing that always pissed me off, (laughs) the songs would start and that damn DJ would keep talking. (laughs) And he wouldn't shut up until the singer would start the words. And they knew exactly how much time they had to ramble. yeah, because they listened to the song 40 million times. So they knew that there was 10 seconds worth of musical intro before the singer would start. Start. And it was like, well, that's not important. Only the singer. No, shut up. I want to get the entire oh, song man. because I love the music as well as the singer. If you're doing Boston's foreplay long time, they could talk for three minutes over that <laughs> shit before they right. actually start <laughs> singing. Or they would cut off the end of a great song. And don't forget to come down to your local Chevy dealership. and <laughs> Like Hotel California. That's got a, like oh, a two minute guitar riff at the end of that. Yep. And I swear to God, I tried to record that song about 15 different times. And that stupid DJ. <laughs> (laughs) would either cut the song off to go to the next one or would start talking about the local car dealership and I want to slap the crap out of him sometimes for that. (laughs) I would call the station. Look, the next time you play Hotel California, I'm going to record it, so shut the hell up. (laughs) That's my rant for today. They know the only time they wouldn't cut off your song in the front of the end is when they would run one of their dump songs. You know about these? Like uh, American Pie by uh, Don McLean. Right. Uh That song's like eight and a half minutes long. Oh yeah. And if the DJ needed to go 
take a dump. <laughs> he would put on one of these really long the songs. Break song, right? It started and it ran all the way to completion. You know that's one of those. He had to go take right. a crap. And so he plays the longest track he has. They were conspicuous. They'd run about the same time of the day. That was the only time you could get a song that wasn't chopped off. Yeah, because it's not like it is now where everything's digital and they can queue up 20 songs in a row. Or Sure. Yeah, they had to get back. They had to queue up the next one. The other thing is you had to wait often to the end of the song. You couldn't just pause it because there was no Shazam. There was no app to find out, hey, what song is this? <laughs> right. What song is playing? You had to hope at the end of it they said, and that was this new song by this new Which artist. Which they didn't you know? always do. I know. Like, who the hell was well, it? Well, especially if they were in one of the middle of those, um, we're going to play 10 songs in a row with no commercial interruption right. or something. And then what yep. you would have to hope is that at the end of that, he would say, and the songs in that segment were... They do a rundown. Right. And then you had yep, to kind yeah. of pair it up and say, okay, it was the third song in that group and oh yeah. yeah that ends up making record stores more important because back then you could walk in a record store and say i heard this song it goes like this yeah and he might be able to tell you whereas now you can just shazam it you don't have to do any human interaction right yeah. <laughs> let me tell you but that's how you learn about new music of course either a friend had the album right mm -hmm. or you heard it on the radio right i mean that was really the only two ways you had yeah 90 percent of the music. time it was hearing it on the radio first mm -hmm. yeah because my buddies they couldn't afford to buy records either so right. we all heard it on the radio exactly first. <laughs> now, as we get set to hear the number one song in the land, let's check out the number ones on Billboard's other charts. Number one on the country chart is Mama, He's Crazy by the Judds. And on the four other major Billboard charts, we have the same artist holding down all the top spots. That happened just over a year ago when Michael Jackson was at number one on the soul chart and the pop chart with Billie Jean. And number one on the dance chart and the album chart, with his LP Thriller. You guys ever do any late night listening? I always like that better because generally the DJs had more time. It was less commercial. That's when they would play like deep tracks or... Oh, not just the payola. Yeah. Once I got a little bit older, you'd stay up later and listen to in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, and tangentially related to that, I did some late night listening mode, but for me it was more of... I love like old radio shows from the 40s and 50s and old AM radio. AM? They were news during the day, <laughs> but in the evening there was this great series called the CBS Radio Mystery Theater. It was really the end. It was the bookend on the end of any kind of radio fiction. But I remember growing up that they would run that every night on my local AM station if you had to stay up like 10 o'clock at night to hear it. But it was the only place you could get that other than buying old tapes mm -hmm. of, you know, The Shadow or Faber, McGee, and Molly. Well, or that's what I was going to ask, because I remember when you and I met when you were in college, John, you had a huge collection of like shadow tapes and stuff that you had recorded mm -hmm. yeah. from somewhere. Was that where you got them from, those late night AM radio shows? Or You're kind of right, George. The Shadow and those shows that you're talking about I never heard on radio originally they were long gone before I was right. born yeah. but my introduction to loving that kind of like audio only fiction and now these days translated to podcast. what is podcast fiction you know great shows I first found a love for that by listening to that old AM radio and you didn't know what it was going to be it could be a monster story it could be a murder mystery it could be anything you just you were there 10 o'clock at night I was supposed to be asleep got the AM radio on and I'm listening to some spooky story on late night radio that was the only place to get it and then later I found out oh this was inspired by you know the 40s and 50s old talk radio and that's uh, that was when I first was introduced to it we've talked a lot about the local radio mm -hmm. and that was always a blast but your local radio they didn't just run just local stuff all the time they would also run the syndicated things that they would oh, yeah. get from, you know, the bigger markets and stuff. And you would have your national broadcast that would happen on a the top 40 countdown with Casey, Casey Queso. Queso. Right. <laughs> yeah. Who didn't listen to that? And he writes, dear Casey. <laughs> well, you were talking about the late night thing. I remember the first late night thing I heard was Dr. Demento. Oh, sure. All the parody songs. Yeah, That's where Weird Al got his exactly. start. Exactly. Oh, wow. There were some somewhat famous national radio DJs like Wolfman Jack. Sure. You know, he was a big guy in the 70s, I guess, right? 50s, actually. <laughs> Does he go back that far? Like 50s, 60s. I think he went back to the 60s oh, at least. Really? Well, wow. well, you're older than us, so you would know. Well, yeah, I can't right. listen to him then, but I know he's he's been around for a really <laughs> long time. Mo was listening to radio during World War II when the Japanese were sending broadcasts. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's not. Not that old. He's still a Gen X. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're the baby, George, doesn't mean everyone is ancient. That's right. Casey Kasem, the top 40 countdown every week. Top 40 countdown. Yeah. We listen to that probably every week. Oh, yeah. It was an event. Yeah. That was a prime place to record your favorite songs because mm -hmm. all the good ones are going to be there. Oh, yeah. And if my artist got kicked out of the number one spot, I'm pissed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't just like introduce us. There's always like a small story behind every song. There's a story. 
Absolutely. You know, yeah. I thought that was a cool aspect to what he did. This singer got his start yeah. when he was collecting turtles in the backyard, and he would prick exactly. his finger, and yeah, that made like, him think of, <laughs> prick your finger, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> really? It's like a tiny bit of behind the music on VH1. You get that little snippet of yeah. just an insight into the artist. But it, it was funny, though, to me, because Casey Kasem, he had probably the most unique voice in radio. Yeah. It was so full of cheese, but it was so good at the same time that you, I just couldn't <laughs> yeah. stop listening to him. It was so funny. I wouldn't have pegged him for a radio personality listening to him the first time. Right. But boy, he sounded so sincere and a little bit hammy all the time, didn't he? Yep. I think it's fair to say that there was a lot that was unique and special about radio when we were growing up. A lot of that is lost, but in a small way, I like to think that by producing podcasts like this, what we're doing, talking directly to our listeners and listening back to them, it's not quite live, but I hope we're doing our part to kind of resurrect a little bit of that Gen X experience. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I mean, you get to know us through listening to our different podcasts just like you got to know that DJ when you would listen to your yeah. local radio station. For better or worse, you get to know us. <laughs> <laughs> Take the good with the bad. Yeah. And we love producing it because we like getting to know you guys when you write in or when you send us suggestions or you view or leave comments on videos. It's that interactivity, I think, is one of the pieces that sparks us loving to generate content with GXG for people listening like our fourth listener here on the podcast. Absolutely. Yep, I'm with you on that one. Love comic books? Then check out Parlapod, the podcast for die-hard fans. We've got interviews. Hi, this is Kelly Jones. Hi, everybody. This is John Semper. This is Ming Chen. Hey, this is Tim Seeley. Hey, folks. This is Brian O'Halloran. Hey, what up? This is Jason Mewes, and you're listening to Parlapod.com comic book podcast. Snooch to the news. Reviews. These covers are, are blowing me away. Ugh. So Concept is just too darn good. I wish they had done a better job with it. And all the comic book news you need to know about. Mark Strong is in talks to play the villain, Dr. Savant. All in, man. He was a great Sinestro, too. Available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, YouTube, Google Play, and it's always free to download. Follow us on social media at Parlapod. Fresh episodes every Wednesday morning, just in time for your trip to the local comic book store. Parlapod, we are your source for everything comic book related. Give us a listen today. I really enjoyed that Backtrack podcast, guys. I know that we talked about some stuff we can throw in the show notes down there, some of our favorite radio station oldies. I'm sure there's some videos on YouTube or something that we'll put in the show notes for some links for you guys to check out Mm -hmm. so you can relive the local radio experience just like we love to do. And so you don't miss any of our great podcasts in the future, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or however you get your podcasts. And whether you listen on iTunes or not, we would appreciate if you pop open iTunes, search for Gen X Grown Up and leave us that five-star review and a rating because that helps other people find us. And if you have a friend who doesn't listen to the Gen X Grown Up podcast, tell them about us. If you like the stuff we're doing and they're your friend, they might like it too. You know, we obviously started this podcast because we got an email from our fourth listener. We want to hear some of your ideas. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that you grew up with during your generation. We want to find out the topics you would like us to talk about. Send us an email at podcast at genxgrownup.com. You can visit us on YouTube or you can check out our site, which is genxgrownup.com. You sure can. Hey, I enjoyed getting together. Mo, thanks so much. Oh yeah, this is fun. George, always a pleasure. Yes, sir. We will have a new show next week, so we'll see you back then. See you guys. See you, everybody. Bye-bye. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown-up? No games, no puns. Basically, life sucks as a grown-up. This has been a production of the GWW Radio Network. Please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Also, check out Geeks Worldwide at the GWW.com for all the latest news, reviews, and opinions on video games, comics, movies, TV, cosplay, and more. Geeks Assemble! Yeah, and whether you use iTunes or not, we would really appreciate if you would stop by. <clears throat> I'm going to burp there. <laughs> <laughs> Can't edit that out. No. I- <laughs> hello out there. Yes, hello out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist, 
Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nim But the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!